Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning. And what does that mean? It's time for swimming? No, not time for swimming. You're probably all swimming right now, but it isn't time for swimming. It's story time. So I hope everybody gets out of their pools and runs to their computers to watch story time. Um, I'm going to look through my, my magic mirror. Let me see if anybody's here yet. Mm, I don't see anybody yet. I hope they're coming. But maybe what I'll do is, maybe I will put my magic mirror down. And maybe I will sing one song. And then maybe I will then pick up the magic mirror again. I know sometimes people, it takes a long time to dry off from their swimming pool or run in from riding their bicycles. So I'll, be, I'll work a little bit slowly today in, in hopes that you get here. Okay, so here we go. I always start story time with, do you know the song? That's right. Ready? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open up your little mouth, but do not let them in, in, in. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Good job. Okay, let's see. I think... I think I'll start with this story, The Little Engine That Could. This is a really nice story, and I hope you all enjoy it. It's by Waddy Piper. So it's called what? The Little Engine That Could. I bet when I start reading it, you're going to say, oh, I know part of that story. All right. So here we go. Chug, chug, chug. Puff, puff. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. The little train rumbled over the tracks. She was a happy little train. For she had such a jolly load to carry. Her cars were full, filled full of good things for little boys and little girls. They, they were toy animals, giraffes with long necks, see them? And teddy bears with almost no necks at all, and even a baby elephant. Then there were dolls, dolls with blue eyes and yellow curls, dolls with brown eyes and brown bobbed heads, and the funniest little toy clown you ever saw. And there were cars full of toy engines, airplanes, tops, jackknives, picture puzzle books, and every kind of thing that boys or girls could possibly want. But that was not all. Some of the cars were filled with all sorts of good things for boys and girls to eat. Big golden oranges, red-cheeked apples, and bottles of creamy milk for their breakfast some fresh spinach for their dinners, peppermint drops and lollipops, and all kinds of after-meal treats. The little train was carrying all these wonderful things to the good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain. She puffed along merrily, and all of a sudden, she stopped with a jerk. She simply could not go another inch. She tried.
tried and she tried, but her wheels would not turn. What were all those good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain going to do without the wonderful toys to play with and all of that good food to eat? Here comes a shiny new engine, said the funny little clown who jumped out of the train. See, there he is. He jumped right out. Let's ask him if he can help us. So all the dolls and all the toys cried out together. Please, please, shiny new engine, won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down. And the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or any good food to eat unless you help us. But the shiny new engine snorted. I pull you? I'm a passenger engine. I've just carried a fine big train over the mountain with more cars than you've ever dreamed of. My train had sleeping cars with comfortable berths, a dining car where waiters bring whatever hungry people want to eat, and parlor cars with which people sit in soft armchairs and they look out of big, big plate glass windows. I pull the likes of you? Indeed not. And off he steamed to the roundhouse where engines live when they are not busy. How sad the little train and all the dolls and toys felt. They were so sad. Then the little clown called out, the passenger train is not the only one in the world, you know. Here's another engine coming, a great big strong one. Let's ask him to help us. The little toy clown waved his flag and the big strong engine came to a stop. Please, oh please, Mr. Big Engine, cried all the dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down and the good little boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or any good food to eat unless you help us. But the big, strong engine bellowed, I'm a freight engine. I just pulled a big train with big machines over the mountain. Those machines print books and newspapers for grown-ups to read, you know. I'm a very important engine indeed. I pull the likes of you. And the freight engine puffed off. And he went indignantly to the back to the roundhouse. The little train and all the do toy toys were very, very sad. Cheer up, cried the little toy clown. The freight engine is not the only one in the world. Here comes another one. He looks very old and very tired. But our train is so little, perhaps he can help us. So the little toy clown waved his flag again, and this dingy, rusty old engine stopped. Please, kind engine, cried all the do dolls and toys together. Won't you please pull our train over the mountain? Our engine has broken down, and the boys and girls on the other side won't have any toys to play with or any good food to eat unless you help us. But the rusty old engine sighed. Oh, I'm so tired. I must rest my weary wheels. I cannot even pull a little train your size over the mountain. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. And off he rumbled to the roundhouse chugging. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Then indeed, the little train was very, very, very sad and the dolls and the toys were ready to cry. But the little cl clown called out, here's another engine coming up. Here's another engine, a blue engine, a very little one maybe, but she maybe she'll help us. The very little engine came 
chug, 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 chugging merrily along. When she saw the toy clown's flag, she stopped quickly. What is the matter, my friends? she asked kindly. Oh, little blue engine, cried the dolls and the toys. Will you pull us over the mountain? Our engine has broken down, and the good boys and girls on the other side of the mountain won't have any toys to play with or any good food to eat unless you help us. Please, please help us. Please, little blue engine. I'm not very big, said the little blue engine. They use me only for switching trains in the yard. I have never even been over the mountain. But we must get over the mountain before the children awake, said all the dolls and toys. The very little engine looked up and saw the tears in the doll's eyes. And she thought of all those good little boys and girls on the other side of the mountain who would not have any toys or any good food to eat unless she helped. Then she said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And she hitched herself to the little train. She tugged, and she pulled, and she tugged, and she pulled, and slowly, 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 they started off. The toy clown jumped aboard, and all the dolls and all the toy animals began to, began to smile and cheer. Puff, puff, chug, chug, went the little blue engine. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I think I can, 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 I think I can. Up, 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 faster and faster and faster the little engine climbed until at last they reached the top of the mountain. Down in the valley lay the city. Hooray, hooray, cried the funny little clown and all the dolls and toys. The good little boys and girls in the city will be happy because you helped us, kind little blue engine. And the little blue engine smiled and seemed to say as she puffed steadily down the mountain, I thought I could, 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 I thought I could. And that's the end of the little engine that could. I hope you liked that story. That's one of my favorite stories. I say that about all the stories. So you know what I think? I think I like all the stories that I read. Okay, so now I'm hoping everybody came out of their pools and got off of their bicycles and came to story time. So I'm gonna look through the magic mirror and let's see if I see who came this morning. Ah, I see Charlotte now and I see Aaliyah. Oh. I see Noah's here. Hi, Noah. And Jacqueline's here again. Hi, Jacqueline. Good to see you guys. I'm so happy that you made it. I don't see a lot of kids here today, but maybe Cousin Vincent will be here and Stella and Lincoln and Nico and little Polly and Ruby. I hope you guys are all watching. We read the first story already, The Little Engine That Could. So now I'm going to read the second story. And I bet you know this one. It's called, If You Give a Pig a Pancake. Did you ever give a pig a pancake before? I never have, so I don't know what happens when you give them one. But we will see. So, If You Give a Pig a Pancake by Laura Numeroff. Let's see. Okay. Oh, it looks like somebody took a bite out of my book. And Noah, I haven't forgotten your special request. I think it was called The Marshmallow Incident. Next week I'll be back at the library and I'll be able to get that book for you. And I will read it for the next story time. As long as it's there. As soon as I can get it, I'll read it, Noah. Okay. So, this is what happens if you give a pig a pancake. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. That's pretty reasonable. 
you'll give her some of your favorite maple syrup. You'll share with her, I think. She'll probably get ugh, all sticky. So guess what? She'll want to take a bath. She'll ask you for some bubbles for that bath. And when you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. You'll have to find your rubber duck. The duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. She might feel homesick, and then she'll want to visit her family. She'll want you to come too. She'll look through your closet for a suitcase. And then she'll look under your bed. And when she's under your bed, She'll find your old tap shoes. She'll try them on, and she'll probably need something special to wear with them. When she's all dressed, she'll ask for some music. And you'll play your very best piano piece, and she'll start dancing. Then she'll want you to take her picture. So you'll have to go get your camera now. When she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. And then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her some envelopes and stamps. Then you're gonna have to take her to the mailbox. On the way, she'll see the tree in your backyard and she's gonna to wanna to build a tree house. So you'll have to get her some wood a hammer, and some nails. When the treehouse is finished, she'll want to decorate it. She'll ask you for some wallpaper and some glow. I think she's a little pesky. When she hangs the wallpaper, she'll get all sticky. And feeling sticky will remind her of your favorite maple syrup. And she'll probably ask you for some more. And chances are, if she asks you for some more syrup, she's going to want another pancake to go with it. And that's the end. So don't ever give a pig a pancake. Because see all the work you're going to have to do? Okay, let's sing one little finger and you guys have to remember where we put everything because I can never remember head, shoulder, elbow, I don't know. So I hope you can remember. Are you ready? One little finger, one little finger, one little finger, tap, tap, tap. Point your finger up, point your finger down, put it on your head. One little finger, one little finger, one little finger, tap, tap, tap. Point your finger up, point your finger down, put it on your eyebrow. One little finger, one little finger, one little finger, tap, tap, tap. Point your finger up, point your finger down, put it on your shoulder. One little finger, one little finger, one little finger, tap, tap, tap. Point your finger up, point your finger down, put it on your elbow. One little finger, one little finger, one little finger, tap, tap, tap. Point your finger up, point your finger down, Put it on your knee, put it on your elbow, put it on your what? Shoulder, put it on your eyebrow, put it on your head. Did you guys remember everywhere to put it? I almost forgot a couple of places. But I think I remembered. If I'm wrong, you better tell me because I really, really thought I remembered them all. Okay, so let's read this story. I've actually never read this for story time. It's called One Fine Day. 
by Nani Hogan. Okay. All right. This is a new one, so you guys will have to write to me and let me know if you like it. One fine day, a fox traveled through a great forest. When he reached the other side, he was so thirsty. He put a pail of milk that an old woman had set down. Sorry, he saw a pail of milk that the old woman had set down while she was gathering wood for her fire. And before she noticed the fox, he had lapped up most of her milk. The woman became so angry, she took the fox's tail. And the fox began to cry. Please, old woman, give me back my tail. Sew it in place or my friends are gonna laugh at me. Give me back my milk, she said, and I'll give you back your tail. See, she took his tail. She has it right there. So the fox dried his tears and he went to find a cow. Dear cow, he begged, please give me some milk so I can give it to the old woman so she can give me back my tail. The cow replied, I'll give you some milk if you bring me some grass. The fox call, called to the field. Oh, beautiful field, give me some grass. I'll take it to the cow and then she'll give me some milk. Then I'll take the milk to the old woman and she will give me back my tail and then I can return to my friends. The field called back. Bring me some water then. The fox ran to the stream and begged for some water. And the stream answered, bring me a jug. The fox found a fair maiden. Sweet maiden, he said, please give me your jug so I can fetch some water to, get, to give the field, to get some grass, to feed the cow and get some milk so that the old woman will give me back my tail and then I can return to my friends? The maiden smiled. If you find a blue bee for me, she said, I will give you my jug. So the fox found a peddler and said, there is a pretty maiden down the road, and if you give me one blue bead, one blue bead for her, she'll be pleased and you will be pleased with me. Then she'll give me her jug so that I can fetch some water and then I can give it to the field to get some grass, to feed the cow and to get some milk to give to the old woman so she'll give me my tail back and I can see my friends. But the peddler was not taken by any promise of a pretty smile or the cleverness of the fox and he replied, pay me an egg and I'll give you a bead. The fox went off, and guess what he found? A hen. Hen, dear, dear, dear hen, please give me an egg to give to the peddler in payment for the bead, to get the jug, to fetch the water, to give the field, to get some grass, to feed the cow, to get the milk, that I must give the old woman so I can get, get my tail back. The hen clucked. I'll trade you an egg for some grain. I don't think he's ever gonna get it. The fox was getting desperate and when he found the miller, he began to cry. Oh, please, kind miller, please give me a little grain. I have to trade it for the egg to pay the peddler to get the blue bead to give to the maiden in return for her jug to fetch the water, to give to the field, to get the grass, to feed the cow, to get the milk, to give to the old woman so that she'll give me my tail back and I, before my, all my friends will laugh at me. The miller was a good man and he felt sorry for the fox. So he gave him the grain and to give to the hen 
to get the A, to pay the peddler, to get the B. To give to the maiden, to get the jug, to fetch the water, to give to the field, to get the grass, to feed the cow, to get the milk, to give the old woman, so she'd give him back his tail. The fox returned to the old woman and gave her the milk. Then she carefully gave him back his tail. And off he ran to join his friends on the other side of the forest. Phew, I never thought that she was going to get that tail. Did, did she was going to get that tail back, did you? I didn't think so. But I liked that story and I hope you did too. You know what? I see somebody that just came in. Moshe. Hi, Moshe. I missed you at the beginning, but I'm so glad that you're here. Were you outside in a pool or riding your bicycle? Or just a little busy for the beginning of story time, maybe. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. Is anybody else here? Let's see if anybody else came in. Yep. Devin Yogi. Yep. Hi, Devin. I'm glad you're here. You guys are always here, and I'm happy. But even if you come a tiny bit late, it's wonderful to see you guys again. Okay, so now we've had three stories, and I do have one more story and one more song to sing. Um, let me look again, because I want to see, is Vinny and Georgia here, or Lucia, or, or um, Gabriel and Julie? Uh, Juliet and Max, did you guys come to story time today? I'm not sure, but hello, Emmeline and Amelia and Rocco and Dominic. I hope you enjoyed all of our stories. We've read three already, and we have one more to go and one more song. Let's do If You're Happy and You Know It. Are you ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three, clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three, clap, clap, stomp, stomp, Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show, if you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp. Hooray! Good job, you guys. Okay, let's finish up with the carrot seed. So, did you guys ever plant anything and it grew or it didn't grow? Well, this little boy is going to plant a carrot seed. I don't know if it'll grow, but we will see. And it's by Ruth. Crops. Okay. The carrot seed. A little boy planted a carrot seed. His mother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. His father said, I'm afraid it won't come up. And his big brother said, it won't come up. Every day, the little boy pulled up the weeds around the seed, and he sprinkled the ground with water. But nothing came up. And nothing came up. Everybody kept saying, it won't come up. It just won't. But... He still pulled the weeds around it every day, and he sprinkled the ground with water. And then, one day, a carrot came up. Just as the little boy knew it would. 
And that's the end. That was a quick story. But anyway, so before I go, I would like to tell you about a little bit about we have a summer reading club coming up called Imagine Your Story. Of course, it's all online, but it's beginning Monday, June 22nd. And if you go to our Facebook page, you'll, you, you'll need to fill out a form. And every week we have challenges that you guys can do. And every Monday or every Friday, we're going to have something special. Either um, Kidstock Theater is coming back at the end of the summer. And um, I'm starting off Monday showing you some magic tricks. Um, not too good, but I'm going to do some magic tricks. And then I'm going to show you how to perform them. So that's for Monday, and that will be at 11 o'clock. And we have a singer, Emily Hall, and um, we're going to be doing origami, and we're going to have a scavenger hunt. So what I'd like you to do is check our website, Facebook, every Monday, and we're going to ask you on, the, um, on your form whether you liked the book or it was so bad you'd rather feed it to your dog. We're going to ask you sometimes to read in the tub or read outside or read under a tree, or read in your pool. Just don't get the books wet. Anyway, so again, I want to remind you, Monday, June 22nd, it's coming up this week, I'll be doing magic for a little bit and showing you how to perform the tricks, and you'll be able to join our reading club online. So I hope to see all of you guys. I hope to, you'll be all, all reading all summer long with us. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye, and thanks for coming. I know it's a nice warm day, and you could have been outside, but I'd rather read stories, too. Bye, guys.